Yesterday I was talking about giving feedback, right? So this week we've been talking about helping teammates identify where they want to get that they might not be able to get there without coaching and mentoring, right? And so that's, that was day one. Day two, we talked about like, are you even coachable? Are you coachable uh, for me or somebody else? And then yesterday we talked about feedback, like, you know, teammates around you giving you feedback, things that you're doing specifically that might propel you towards your next objective role, responsibility in the company or something that might hinder you. Today I want to talk about like when do you stop? Like when do you as a leader stop giving feedback? And you know, it's really difficult. One of my one of my superpowers is being relentless. And and so, you know, for me it's like, man, I, I don't ever want to stop giving feedback. Now, when I say that, I also have a proclivity, thank you Rick Meyer, for being like my passive aggressive feedback. Like that's not healthy. So when do you stop giving healthy feedback? Maybe it's when somebody is like changes their mind, like, you know, hey, I want to get, you know, I want to grow into this position. And then they're like, no, nah, I just want to stay in this position. Like, I want to just, I just want to stay where I am. Nothing wrong with just checking the box and making the donuts every day, so to speak, right? There's nothing wrong with like just settling in, being like, I'm good. This is a good spot for me. Um, that sounds condescending if I say make the donuts, but like just, you know, a rhythm of like, I'm good. I'm good in my position. I'm satisfied. I don't have aspirations to go to this next position, right? And it might not just be vertical. It could be horizontal position. But if somebody doesn't want to, if they change their mind and they don't want to go to another position, then that would warrant me not giving them feedback to get better in a specific area that would help them in that new position, right? But if they actually say that I actually want to get the skill sets, I want to develop the skills to get to that next position, or I want to develop the skills for relationships or financial acumen or physical fitness, I actually want that, then you as a leader, like you just stay the course. You continue to give healthy, constructive feedback to anybody in your charge or any teammate, any teammate that suggest that they still want to make progress in this area of their life. So if it's, you know, whatever it is, whatever career, whatever the area is that they want to continue to try to progress, then you as a leader, as a teammate of theirs, I feel like I have the responsibility to continue to give them feedback. And again, my, the challenge for me would be continue to give healthy, constructive feedback and not be passive aggressive, right? So when I get pissed or overwhelmed, I can give you feedback, but it could be very passive aggressive and that's not healthy and it's really not long term, it's just not helpful. The question to answer for me to answer today is when do you stop? It's like you don't stop giving feedback unless the person that doesn't want you to coach them anymore and or they change their mind that they actually don't want to make improvements in those specific areas. But if they do want to make improvements in those specific areas, I feel like you as a leader have a responsibility. You as a leader, a teammate of mine, or you as the owner of a company, um, I think you are, you have a responsibility to continue to stay the course. And when you hear yourself say something like, they just don't want it, or they just don't get it, or they just don't care, I think that's more of a reflection of me and my motives of being selfish versus, you know, a healthy version of me, which would be, I'm going to stay the course. I'm going to be very healthy with my uh, feedback, and I'm just going to stay the course and continue to provide them healthy, constructive feedback, right?